for Jesus coming into the world and into our lives. However, Advent is not only a time in which we wait for the Lord to come to us, we are reminded today that our lives should be a journey as well, a journey to God. Even as we prepare for the Lord's coming at Christmas, let us also continue walking our own path to the Lord. 
The scripture readings are found in the bulletin. As we gather to worship as a family of St. Colobanus, please stand as we begin our liturgy with a song from our ministers of music. Praise the Lord as we begin this Advent journey here. So come thou almighty King. Emmanuel. The promise of ages. Come to dwell in us and among us. Happy hands, everybody. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Even those of you who are at home, I don't care where you are, wherever the people of God are congregated, the Lord is in our midst. I don't care where you are, your bedroom, on the bus stop, it doesn't matter. Give the Lord a praise. You can dance right where you are. Come thou almighty king, help us thy name to sing. Come thou almighty king, help us thy name to sing. Come thou almighty king, help us thy name to sing. Come thou almighty king, help us thy name to sing. We come to praise, we come to praise, we come to praise thy name. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Come thou, come thou, almighty King. Help us thy name to sing. Come thou, almighty King. Help us thy name to sing. Oh, come thou almighty King. Help us thy name to sing. Come thou almighty King. Help us thy name to sing. We come to praise. We come to praise. We come to praise thy name. All glorious, ever victorious, come and reign over us, come and reign over us, Father of glorious, ever victorious, come and reign over us, come and reign over us, we come to praise, we come to praise, we come to praise thy name, thy name. Your name is a strong tower. Thy name. Thy name. Your name is powerful. Thy name. There's peace in your name. Thy name. There's joy in your name. Thy name. Oh, thy name. Demons tremble. Thy name. Demons tremble at your name. Thy name. We come to praise. 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 Thy name. We are gathered here together this evening so that together we might be able to praise God's name. We come together to celebrate this life, this gift of love, this holy season of Advent that you and I now begin together. That over these next couple of weeks, you and I are called to live with expectant hope 
as we prepare ourselves for the birth, the coming of our Messiah, Jesus. And so, church, as we gather, we call on God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's as we gather here at this altar in this season of Advent that we are reminded as a parish that this is a time for us to be waiting, to be watching, and to be wrestling. That if we really want to prepare ourselves, that if we really want to live with this expectant hope as we wait for the birth of our Messiah, we are called to make sure that we use these days to grow in our relationship with God. And so we begin our season of Advent with this celebration of Advent by candlelight, an opportunity for each of us to be reminded that Jesus Christ is the light of our lives. That when we come here to this altar, we get to receive this great gift of mercy and peace and love and forgiveness that is promised to each of us. And so, my friends, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we first pause to call to mind our sins and to ask again for God's pardon and peace. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and hearken our hearts so that we fear not you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountain quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard from of the old. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are polluted like rags. We have all withered like leaves 
and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We all, we are all the work of your hands, the word of the Lord. Lord, we expect you any time, oh, any time. And how we wait just to see your blessed face, your blessed face. Expect you. We expect you. We expect you in any, any time. Lord, we expect you. For unto us a child is born, and how we long to see Emmanuel God be with us, wonderful Consolor. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Also, until your return, we will keep the fire burning. Keep the prayer wheel turning. Keep the praises ringing in our hearts. Oh, in our souls, how our hearts are yearning. Just for your returning. You promised us that you would take us home. Oh, you promised us. Take us home, take us home, we expect you, yes we do, we expect you, we expect
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all disclosure and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. 
he leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen? Okay. Uh, this evening as we, we kick off the season of Advent, and uh, by this wonderful celebration, Advent by candlelight, I think the coronavirus uh, pandemic has taught us all one thing in the year 2000. To be vigilant. <laughs> to be vigilant uh, in ways that we act or behave so that we do not catch the virus or spread the virus. Because the virus is what? Deadly. Isn't that true? And so uh, <laughs> there's been all these, uh, if you like, ways of reminding us to be vigilant. And we, we've heard of the three W's, right? What, what, what do they say? Wash your hands. Wash, okay? W. Wear a mask. <laughs> and watch your distance, okay? So six feet apart. So these three W's remind us how we, we have to be vigilant. And as I reflected on the readings for, for this Sunday, uh, on this first Sunday of Advent, I could not help but to see a pattern as we begin the season of Advent with three W's as well. Waiting, watching, and wrestling. <laughs> Waiting, watching, and wrestling. Just as we have wash, wear, and watch. Very, very powerful word. So we're going to start with, with the word waiting. Waiting. Uh, in this day and age of, of instant gratification, right? We want things to happen quickly, microwave, <laughs> put it in, out, okay? Uh, instant coffee and all that. We, 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 we've not cultivated the habit of what? Waiting. We, we're not good at waiting. Hmm? I, I once was speaking to a member of this church and she says, the new generation of young people want it and they want it. What did you say? Now? No. She said yesterday. They want it and they want it yesterday. So, so we, 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 
we've not cultivated the habit of waiting. But, but the English word Advent, which comes from the Latin word Adventus, hmm, was used to announce the arrival or the coming of a king. So having the season of Advent in the church is to announce to the Christian people and to the whole world, like Pope Benedict XVI said, that God is here. That God has not redrawn from the world. That God has not deserted us. That God comes to visit us in many ways. God is here. So we are invited to be an Advent people. Listen to this very carefully. We are invited to be an Advent people. Always waiting. Always watching. And always, what? Wrestling. The challenge for the people of Israel and for us today has always been to recognize God in the hour of his visitation. See, if we're waiting for the coming of the king, if we're watching, if we're wrestling, one of the things that Israel failed to do was to what? To recognize when God visited his people. There's a beautiful text in Luke's gospel, chapter 19, Verse 44, you remember one of the times that Jesus wept over Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem. And he, he lamented and said this. He said, he said, you did not recognize the hour of your visitation. See, so one of, one of the great things in the spiritual life is always, do we recognize the hour when God visits us? So what is it going to take? For, for God to get our attention. The first reading that we heard today from Isaiah, and please, I'd like to really encourage you when you go home, just read the whole of Isaiah 63 and Isaiah 64. Very powerful word. Now, it's set in the context where the Israelites are returning from the Babylonian exile. Okay? In the year 587 B.C., right, Babylon invaded and what? Destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. Brought it to ruins. And carried a lot of Israelites into exile. So at this point in Isaiah, they are being what? Brought back into what? Into Jerusalem so they could rebuild the temple of God. And what Isaiah seems to be telling them is simply this. That you did not heed the warnings of the prophets. When the prophets warned you. Not to what? Profane the name of the Lord. Not to worship idols. Not Check, one, two. Oh, this is beautiful. So why do you what? Why do you let us wander, O oh Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? It's like he's beginning to lament and simply say, God, you know we belong to you. But often you simply stand and you look on us as we wander from your ways. And he says, what would it take you to do to get our attention so he says mm? he says would that you would what you would you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking because you are a god who works wondrous deeds would that you might meet us doing right that we are mindful of you when you come back to us so while we are waiting for the arrival of the coming king, are we going to be like the people of Israel? Is the Lord going to meet us doing right and mindful of him? 
the prophet has proposed a number of things for us. And what does he say? He says we should be a people who wait for the Lord, right? And not wander off. You know what happens when you tell somebody to wait for you, especially children. You're in a shopping mall, you tell them, sit here and wait for me. <laughs> By the time you come back, they're up wandering. That's your story, that's my story. And so as we prepare in this season of Advent for the coming of the King, let us not wander off. Let us not wander off. Let's allow God to work in our lives. Because as the reading ends, what does it simply say? It says, oh Lord, you are our Father. He says, we are the clay and you are the potter. So one of the things we do as we wait for the Lord is to become teachable. If you like, is to become malleable, like clay in the hands of the porter. That God can shape us in the way he wants to shape us and mold us. And so we wait patiently. Isaiah himself in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. Very famous text. What does he say? They that hope in the Lord. In certain texts it says, They that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. And they will soar with eagle's wings. They will run and not grow weary. Walk and not grow faint. So we're going to be waiting. Secondly, we got to be people who watch. Watching. The gospel reading today says it bluntly. Be watchful. Be alert. You do not know when the time will come. What I say to you, I say to all. He says, watch. So one of the great truths in the spiritual life is that we fail to recognize the presence of God in our own lives, in the lives of others, and in the world around us. The saints and the great spiritual teachers of our faith always speak about an awakening. So that's what they describe the spiritual life. The spiritual life is all about what? An awakening. Waking up. You and I are often asleep at the wheel of life. Listen to how St. Augustine puts it. In a very beautiful way, St. Augustine of Hippo, he says, You were with me, but I was not with you. Created things kept me from you. Yet, they, if they had not been in you, they would not have been at all. He says, You called, you shouted, and you broke through my deafness. You flashed, you shone, and you dispelled my blindness. You breathed your fragrance on me. I drew in breath and now I pant for you. I have tasted you, now I hunger and thirst for more. You touched me and I burn for your peace. This is St. Augustine speaking. So in the gospel today, what we hear is that he says, Mark says, May he not come suddenly and find you what? Sleeping. Sleep is something that happens physically. But in a spiritual life, it's used as a metaphor. How awake or how asleep are you and I spiritually? Keeping watch has something to do with staying in prayer. This is what Jesus told Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane while going through his agony. He says, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for an hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. And he says, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. Mark chapter 14, verse 37 and 38. So prayer is more than just saying prayers. So as we begin this season of Advent, it, it's not just calling on us to, to say our prayers. It's more than that. It's an invitation right, to enter into what we call relational communication with God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because God is interested in a relationship with us. Sometimes we treat God like the gas station. You know the gas station? You know? 
we, we, we drive around, we drive around, we drive around, and then what happens is we think of God only when our gas tank is running low or when we're in a crisis. We cannot treat God like that. God is not a gas station. God seeks to have a relationship with us. And so the challenge as we keep watching in this season of Advent is this. First, let's fall in love with God. Fall in love with God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says what? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he says all these other things will be added to you. Because often what we do is you and I chase after the other things before we seek the kingdom of God. And then what happens is naturally when we're falling in love with God, what we will fall in love with his word. Hmm? And so reading and studying the word of God will become something that we love to do as we grow in our knowledge of God who has loved us and continues to make himself known to us. One of the ways we can keep watching is also fellowship. Fellowshipping, hanging out with others who love God. The celebration of the sacraments, like we are here this evening. These are moments of encounter. Very soon, we are going to encounter the Lord by Him giving us His body and His blood. That we might be what? We might be nourished. We can encounter God also through ministry, serving others. Very, very powerful ways of keeping watch. So this is how we keep our lamps trimmed and burning Hmm? until the time draws near. The gospel says, we do not know the hour he's going to come. He might come in the evening, at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning. None of us knows. Jesus says, you neither know the time nor the hour. What he tells us to do, don't focus on looking for a specific time. He just says, be prepared. So he says, keep watch, be alert. And then finally, wrestling. Wrestling. For, for, the, for probably the last couple of months, eight months or so, as we all grappled with the COVID-19 pandemic, this word wrestling has been on my heart. And what happened was as I read the scriptures, I began to realize Jacob, you know Jacob in the Old Testament, his name was changed to Israel. In, in Genesis chapter 32, reading from verse 23 to about 32. His name was changed to Israel when he had a dream. You remember where he saw a ladder connecting heaven and earth and angels ascending and descending. It says he wrestled with somebody in the night. And when he woke up, he realized he had been wrestling with God. So when his name was changed to Israel, what it says is that the name Israel means one who contends with God, one who who wrestles with God. <laughs> now, brothers and sisters, each one of us sitting here, and probably you watching this, this very uh, broadcast from home, each one of us wrestles with something. We wrestle with our passions, our erotic energies. Some of us wrestle with, with, with addictions to food, addictions to drugs. Some of us wrestle with with, 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 with work, workaholics. We're chasing after careers. We're chasing after our vocations. And we wrestle. Some of us wrestle with unresolved conflicts. Toxic shame. Family drama. Fears and doubts. Our faith in God. Some of us wrestle with chronic anxiety. Some of us wrestle with issues of injustice. Poverty, racial discrimination, euthanasia, abortion, capital and death penalty, war, the refugee crisis, violence in our city. Some of us even wrestle with the church as an institution or organized religion. We wrestle with all these issues. But listen to St. Augustine, whom I referred to earlier. He used to, he's a saint. But he used to wrestle with his sexuality, particularly the area of chastity. He says he used to pray always, Lord, make me more chaste. But he says 
he would hear like a little voice inside him saying, not yet. Make me more chaste, but not yet. He struggled in the area of his sexuality. He lived with a woman out of wedlock, a mistress, and had, he fathered a child out of wedlock, right? But here he is, we hail him as St. Augustine. The opposite will be Mother Teresa of Calcutta, another saint. After her death, a book was published, Come Be My Light, which, which was like her, her reflections and correspondence with her, her spiritual director, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. It says for 50 years, she was almost like in darkness. This was her experience of God. She felt dry. She felt empty. She felt lonely. She felt like there was a dark hmm, feeling that was devoid of anything that you could think of as God. But yet we call her a saint. So if even the saints wrestled, look at you and I. You are in good company, brothers and sisters. So during the season of Advent, we are called, what should we do during our wrestling? We are called to surrender control. Surrender control. Have you heard of people who, who went swimming and get into a current and seem to be drowning? They say the more you struggle, the quicker you will drown. You understand what I'm saying? I, I've had an experience like that before. I, I don't know how to swim very well, but when I was in Uganda as a lay missionary, I, I went to the swimming pool with, the, with a few friends, and they jumped into the deep end. Uh, look at me, fool. I also jumped into the deep end. And guess what? I sank like a stone in the deep end. It was somebody who was sitting at the bar who, who realized I did not pop up. So he told the lifeguard, when I was struggling, guess what? I was sinking. I was drowning. But I let go myself. Brothers and sisters, this is, this is always, it was like something was pushing me up. And then the lifeguard came and saved it. It's called surrender. Surrender control in all the circumstances that we wrestle with. Okay, so as I conclude, what has COVID-19 taught us in this year? Life is fragile. A lot of things are outside of our control. This year's season of Advent is different because we begin this new church calendar in the midst of a pandemic. There's a lot of uncertainty as we look into the future. We are waiting for a vaccine. We're watching out so that we don't catch the coronavirus. We are wrestling with a lot of issues. God's invitation has always been for us to live our lives in an endless advent. Always waiting, always watching, and always wrestling. How do we do this? We do this by keeping our lamps trimmed and burning. So let your prayer be, let my prayer be, during the season of Advent, I choose to wait. Did you hear that? Anytime you wake up in the morning, say, Lord, I choose to wait. I'm not in a hurry. I choose to watch. And I choose to wrestle. I'm not going to give up wrestling with the stuff that go on in my life. But in the midst of all this, what do we say? I place my trust in you, Lord. Because like the first reading says, you are my father. You are my redeemer. You are the potter. And I am the clay. God bless you. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning.
you are the living word. Bread of heaven, sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word. Awesome ruler, gentle redeemer. God with us, the living truth. And what a friend we have in you. Bread of heaven, set down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer. God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you, in you. You are the living word, we call you Jesus, Jesus. Oh, that's what we call you. You were manger born, uh, put on a tree, you died to save humanity. Oh, you are the living Somebody say Jesus. Oh, that's what we call you. You were made to bone, put on a tree. You died to save humanity. You are the living word. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. Manger born, put on a tree. So church, I invite us to stand together as we profess our faith, as together we proclaim the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. And so as we enter into this season of Advent, this time of waiting and watching and wrestling, we gather recognizing that God is the one who hears us. And so with that faith and trust, we bring our prayers and needs before our loving God. For our church, that we may go rejoicing to the house of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations, that they may continually work to bring about the day when all armies will lay down their arms and beat their swords into plowshares we pray to the Lord. For the poor and the hungry, who often are neglected during the time between Thanksgiving and Christmas, that they may be cared for and provided for throughout the year, we pray to the Lord. 
who are all around the world suffering from AIDS and for their loved ones, we pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here today, that we may take the opportunity over the next four weeks to prepare our hearts to receive the Lord with the wonder and joy of a child at Christmas, we pray to the Lord. We pray that the progress of robotics and artificial intelligence may always serve humankind, we pray to the Lord. That the keeping of Advent may open our heart to God's love, we pray to the Lord. That the light of Christ may penetrate the darkness of sin, we pray to the Lord. That this Advent wreath may constantly remind us to prepare for the coming of Christ, we pray to the Lord. That the Christmas season may fill us with peace and joy as we strive to follow the example of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord our God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior who enlightens our hearts and dispels the darkness of ignorance and sin. Pour forth your blessings upon us as we light the candles of this wreath. May their light reflect the splendor of Christ who is Lord forever and ever. You may be seated as we prepare our altar as we celebrate this liturgy of the Eucharist. Did we not come for worship? Did we not come for worship? adore him kneel down before him worship and adore him if y'all want to join in you can join in with me oh come come let us adore him kneel down before Worship and adore him. Oh, come. Come, let us adore him. Kneel down before him. Worship and adore him. Because his name is Amen. Lord of Lords, Emmanuel, Lily of the Valley, bright and morning star, Emmanuel, for unto us a child is born, Emmanuel, unto us a son is given, Emmanuel, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Emmanuel, mighty God of us and Father, Prince of Peace, he shall reign I love to call the name of Jesus, Emmanuel. He keeps me comforted, Emmanuel. He healed me when I needed healing, Emmanuel. Walked me up the morning, started me on my way, Emmanuel. Food on the table, a place to stay, Emmanuel. 
early in the morning, late at night, even at midnight hour. Emmanuel. 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 We worship you. We come to worship you, Lord. We worship. We worship you. Oh, how we love to worship you. We worship you. You're worthy of all praise. We worship you. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of power, God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Proclaim 
your death, oh Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, with all the clergy and all your people, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, with St. Columbanus and St. Augustine and St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let the church sing A. Let the church sing A. Everybody sing A. So together as one family and together in one voice, we pray together in the words that our Savior taught us. Jesus, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
provides so why do I worry about my life when you came to my rescue a thousand times every other voice it is a lie God provides God provides in ways that I cannot explain and can't deny the little that I've done he multiplies just when I feel that things won't show up on time God provides he'll come through when the clouds of rain fall down on you and everything you tested and thought that you knew finally you'll see what God can do just for you so tonight say your prayers there's no need to fight God will provide God provides even through this unsure COVID time when it seems there's no peace no peace of mind he sees us through what we can't do yes he will through our faith we know that God has never left anything undone and he even sacrificed his only begotten son oh said foe that sin that we could overcome Tonight, close your eyes, give up the fight and let God provide, God provides, God provides, God provides, God provides, God provides, God provides. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. 
For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Let's thank Kevin DeMond and, of course, Mr. Milas J. Armour for ministering to us this evening. Of course, we want to thank again Dr. Mark Nemo, who offered us this evening's reflection and really began us in this season of Advent together. So thank you, Mark, for the word that you shared with us. As we enter into this season of Advent, it's an opportunity for us, as we've been praying together at this Advent by Candlelight, to be reminded this is a time for us to grow spiritually. It's an opportunity for us to continue to grow as a community of faith. In order to do that, every Tuesday morning for the next four weeks at 10.30 a.m., uh, you'll be able to either call in or log into Zoom and have an opportunity to pray together as a community. Uh, so you'll be able to find on social media, you could call the parish rectory uh, on Monday or Tuesday morning, and we can make sure that we get you that information. We want to make sure that especially as uh, the number of covid confirmed cases continues to rise as more of us will be staying inside throughout the week that we have an opportunity to continue to check in on each other so tuesdays 10 30 a.m we'll have a zoom call a time for prayer with each other then you can stay on that call and join us for bible study that'll take place on tuesdays at 11 a.m our food pantry continues to remain open uh, so please help us uh, get the word out that our food pantry is open every wednesday from 10 a.m until noon uh, for everything else, I encourage you to check the bulletin, to take a bulletin home with you, to look at the flyers that are in there. We have adoration coming up on the first Friday in this month of December. We have more opportunities for us to pray together as a community. So please take your bulletin home with you, follow us on social media, or visit our parish website to keep up with the events that we'll have together over these next couple of weeks. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his second coming, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. And let the church say, as you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. And let the church say, so that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. And let the church say, And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Are you ready? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Are you ready? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? Be also ready. You know not 